In this video, I'm gonna show you how to repurpose video content like a pro. How to take one piece of content and turn it into five or 10 or 20 or 30. How to squeeze every last drop out of every piece of content that you create. How to okay, we got it. All right, Jesus. I wanna make sure they understood. Let's get into it. Here's something you gotta know right away. There's a difference between repurposing content, reposting content, and remixing content. And I bring that up because a lot of times people use those three almost interchangeably and they shouldn't be. Repurposing content, which is what we're gonna talk about in this video today, is taking something like a YouTube video that I'm creating right now and it's breaking it down into other pieces of content. So you're taking one raw content and you're breaking it into multiple. Reposting content is simply reposting old video content or old pieces of content, which I think is a great idea especially if you're looking at your top performing post, of course you wanna get those out there every so often. But that's content that's already created, you're just getting it back in the feed again. Remixing is taking an old or previously created piece of content and just changing or tweaking a few things and then getting it back out there. All right, so if you wanna repurpose like the pro, you gotta get good at these three key areas that all of the top personal brands and company brands have mastered. And number one is how you record or film the content. Number two is the team that you assemble. And number three is the process that you build. Now let's break each one of these down in detail. Number one, how you record. You see, the key to repurposing video content that no one seems to ever get is that it it doesn't start after the content's made, it starts before the content's made because you gotta play the full life cycle out. Example, if I'm recording a podcast or a long form YouTube video or I'm going to an event, I wanna think about what type of content do I wanna get out of this? Where is this content gonna be posted and distributed? Do I need 16 by nine for a YouTube for website content? Do I also need vertical because I wanna do some nine by 16s for YouTube shorts, LinkedIn and TikTok? If so, I gotta make sure I'm set up that way. I gotta make sure I either film in high quality 16 by by nine, or I gotta make sure that I'm filming on both vertical and horizontal to get those clips. Because if I just film vertically from my phone, I'm gonna get some great short form content, but I'm not gonna be able to turn that into 16 by nine for something like a YouTube. Now, once you play out the entire life cycle of that video and you know exactly what type of content you wanna get, how you're gonna get it and where it's going to go, then you can focus on some of the tactical stuff that's very important. Things like if I'm gonna record a long form video, do I embed hooks throughout that video? Meaning before I talk about a subject, I don't just get into and number two, you know, really something you want to be thinking about is X, Y, and Z. Well, how am I going to take that snippet and pull that as a micro clip? The audience isn't going to know what I'm talking about. Number two, what? what, are the, what num what's number one? I wasn't even listening. That They didn't see the full content. They don't have the full context. So you got to be able to embed hooks, whether it's a podcast question that you're asking or whether it's you reframing how you say something. For a video like this, I'm going to go through and strategically add sentences in here that can be used as the start of a standalone clip. Because if you don't do that, yeah, you're going to chop a bunch of stuff up, but it's not going to perform in the feeds. It's not going to be usable content. So you got to be really intentional with, again, where the content... So you you gotta be really intentional with this, even on a tactical level. It's not complicated, just plan out. All right, I'm gonna talk about three core subjects. Each of the three core subjects have three mini subset subjects, and I wanna make sure I lead with a hook for all of them. It's not gonna take away any value from the long form. It's actually gonna add value because you're being more intriguing and interesting throughout the video, but it's gonna ensure that you get the other content that you wanna get when you're done. And I know it's early, but at this point, I'm even thinking about titles and thumbnails. Do I have the pictures or the footage or whatever I need to create a great thumbnail? Am I thinking about the title of the episode or the show or the video going into it so I make sure everything kind of flows according to that? Now, this is my podcast guest trick that no one else uses for some reason, but it allows you to get a ton of micro video content when you're a guest on someone else's podcast or event. And all I do is this. I make sure I got two mics and two videos for the entire recording episode. Example, let's say I'm on a podcast right now and you are interviewing me. I'm gonna have this mic right here that's gonna be for you to hear me so we can get good footage for your podcast. And then I'll have a camera attached to that mic so we make sure we get good camera footage and then good sound to go with it. But see, that's where it ends for most people. They just do that and then they rely on the person to send them the videos and hopefully it's good quality. Hopefully it came out good. It's probably a month or two later. Meanwhile, you've got content that you just created and can use pretty much that week. So what I do is I set up an additional camera in this case, it's typically my smartphone and an additional mic. So I got a tripod that will house my smartphone and the camera or the webcam, whatever else I'm using. I've got a mic like this here. And then I am mic'd up with a wireless lapel mic that's connected to my phone. And if you get one of the tripods that holds the phone and the camera at the same time, you're making eye contact into both lenses. So it looks like you created original content from scratch, which is typically more likely to perform in the feeds versus what most people do where their footage comes back and it looks something like this. They're talking into the camera. It kind of looks like 
like they're on a Zoom call or an interview, which not to say that that can't work, but you were looking right into the lens and like talking and speaking directly to the audience, that a lot of times has more impact. And the best part about this whole thing is as soon as you get off the interview or the event or the call, whatever it is, you could do this for coaching calls, client calls, as soon as you're done, you press stop on your phone and you've now got high quality sound from the mic and then you've got your smartphone quality video from the phone. So now you've got this large macro video clip that you can chop up now, curate, get to editing and poof, you've probably got five to 10 videos. That's part of the equation with how I stay so consistent with video content. You probably have a ton of these opportunities right now, but you're just not taking advantage of it. So hopefully that helps. Moving on to number two, the team you assemble. Every great repurposer has these roles covered. Now, when I go through these roles, it doesn't mean you need to hire an individual person for each role. Definitely not saying that. And I'm definitely not saying that you can't do some of these roles yourself, because you probably will. But what I'm saying is you just can't do all of this alone for long periods of time. Whether that's you hire in an editor or you've got an in-house content director or content manager, you need some form of support and help and management, and you need someone to do the behind the scenes stuff so you can focus on creating more content, speaking with customers, locking up big deals, wherever you need to focus and spend your time on. And of course, everyone's team looks a little bit different. If you're a 200 person company versus a five to 10 person company versus a thousand person company, well, that team's probably going to look a little different, but either way, at some point, all of these roles got to be thought about and taken care of. The first role is going to be the creator. Obviously, you need someone to create the video content to start. That's probably going to be you as a subject matter expert and maybe other subject matter experts in the business. The other role you're going to need to think about is who's filming the content. Now, in a lot of cases these days, it could still be you because you could set up your smartphone or your camera and you can film pretty much anywhere. For some teams, they may want a videographer on site because they can get a lot more creative and film a lot more videos and have them turn out at a higher quality than someone trying to film on their own. Once you're done filming the content, you're going to need someone and that could be the videographer or that could be the person that's filming the content but you need someone to go through and curate the content curating the content is like this remember that podcast trick i just told you where you got this 30 minutes 45 minutes whatever it is of this raw footage well someone now has to go through and decide what clips are good and will make the cut and which ones won't they'll have to decide where they pull from and what the hook's going to be and sometimes that means moving things around or chopping and trimming and replacing you need someone that's going to go through and just make sure that the content that actually makes it to edit is good quality. And then of course, you're going to need someone in post-production and editing. You definitely don't want to be doing editing yourself. There are people that can do it much, much better than you. And for a fraction of the cost that it would take you to actually do that if you figure out your hourly rate. Now, again, that editor could also be the videographer, could also be the curator. These roles can combine. Now, the other role, of course, is the writer. Who's going to write the copy for the post? Who's going to make sure that the transcriptions are put through something like a chat GPT with the right kind of prompts so that you get good blogs, good YouTube descriptions, good newsletters, things like that. Who's going to write the copy for the videos that you're going to post? So, I mean, anyone in this role now should be heavy into using AI for just about every task that they do. It doesn't mean you're going to put it on autopilot and AI writes everything for you, but this person is going to know how to create templates and create context and use prompts so they can use AI to help streamline and make their job more efficient. And then on the back end, you need somebody that's gonna help manage and distribute that content to where it needs to go. And I will say this, the better the team, the better the content. The more you invest in your team, the more your customers and audience are going to invest in your content and convert. And this is a big one. It's just gonna save you a lot of time. The more things get streamlined, the more time you have to do what you need to do in your zone of genius. And finally, number three, the process you build. Nobody posts high quality video content consistently without a good process. Why? Because it's almost impossible. It'll just be messy and all over the place and it'd be dreadful. And I'm not talking about some crazy complex process. I'm talking about a few very simple things. One, you need to think about where you're going to store all of your content and videos. So think about a video archive. For us, we use G Drive. You can also use things like Dropbox. You're probably going to want a project management tool, something like a Trello or a ClickUp. You want visibility into what's being done. Where is it at in the process? Basically, content ideas come in, raw content comes in and it's able to go through a very smooth process to where it comes out the other side, ready to be posted and archived. And you definitely want to automate your content process as much as you possibly can. Now you can actually start this automation at the very beginning of the process, or maybe you've got something with the Zapier automation and it's connecting your project management tool with ChatGPT. So when you drop an idea about something, 
it automatically goes to ChatGPT and creates you a video script. And that video script gets plugged in your project management tool for you to look at, tweak, make some changes, and then record. Or when the raw video content comes into a G drive, it automatically creates a card in your project management tool software. And then when the video is done and you move the card, it automatically moves the files in the G drive. So I'm not going to get too crazy technical on here, but Zapier automations need to be happening in your content process if you want to save time and just be ridiculously more efficient. And of course, you need something where you can schedule and distribute the content. Now on LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, for your website content, your content library, your newsletters, you can do all of these either internally or just on the actual app. But of course, there are those options so you can sign up for a software and be able to post on multiple different platforms in that one software. And that's how you repurpose content like the pros. Now, the other thing that the pros do is they never stop learning. They never stop self-educating. And that's what we're committed to doing with you every single week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. We'll see you around.